All right, good morning. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome, my name is Liz Erlewine and I'm the Visual Arts Director here at Crooked Tree Art Center and welcome to this week's Coffee at 10. Coffee at 10 is a series we've been doing for many, many years. And recently we've started hosting them every Thursday at 10 a.m. in conjunction with an exhibition. So when we have a show on display, uh, when we're able, we gather in the gallery and enjoy a conversation with area artists, artists from uh, outside of the area and also other topics that might connect to the content uh, that's going on at Crooked Tree Art Center's programming. Coffee at 10 happens at Traverse City as well, so you can check that out. Uh, but since COVID, we've been offering this program both uh, in person and online. So hello to our virtual audiences on Zoom and Facebook. Uh, we will be um, checking in with you to see if you have any questions as we go along. Um, my first comments, I guess, are thank yous. I want to thank all Crooked Tree Arts Center members. If you're a member, big thank you to you um, for making this program possible, making our exhibitions possible, and uh, keeping our doors open. So thank you, members. And Coffee at 10 is also made possible thanks to Roast and Toast. I see some folks have found the coffee. Uh, there's some pastries. Uh, there's usually plenty for uh, after our conversation as well. Uh, so thanks, Roast and Toast, and I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, we have two more Coffee at 10 programs for the run of this exhibition. We're currently standing in Crooked Tree Art Center Petoskey's uh, Gilbert Gallery, where we are hosting part of the annual youth art show, where you can see we have youth art blanketing the walls, floor to ceiling all around us. And to complement this uh, annual favorite, we have invited guests to uh, come and speak with us about art education in our region and how we're servicing our community, both uh, youth and adults, uh, in, in various arts. So today's presentation, uh, I'm delighted to welcome Heather Rowie and Louis Millard from uh, Crooked Tree Art Center School of Ballet. Uh, Crooked Tree School of Ballet is one of the programs that we are most proud of. Uh, the accomplishments that Heather and her team have um, made possible over the past 20 years are, are really phenomenal. And today's presentation will give us a little insight as to what's been going on in the past what's going on right now, and uh, how we're looking to, forward to the future. Um, we're going to see lots of amazing images and video, so bear with us as we're making those um, presentations available to you. But we really do want to make today's presentation a conversation as well. So feel free to raise your hand and ask questions as we go. Uh, it's a really a unique chance to get an inside look as to what's going on here at Crick Tree Art Center. So uh, with that, please join me in welcoming Heather. Thank you so much, Liz. I appreciate being here. Thank you for everybody in attendance. Um, again, my name is Heather Rowie. I'm the founder and artistic director of the School of Ballet. And this handsome gentleman is Louis Millard. So we will just get right into it. Here we are. There we go. So past, present, future. 20 years. So 20 years, March 2003 is when we st I started the program here. Uh, we came with two kids uh, and that quickly turned into 150 year round um, within within a couple of years. So I'm not able to click Haley. So there we go. OK, so first class was March 2003. Uh, Cricket Tree Art Center had just redone the space. And so they had this brand new ballet studio, but no, no uh, curriculum, no faculty. So I brought my, my resume in and was hired. And we, as I said, started with two students. Um, and within the first two years, our students started auditioning for summer programs. They were so terrified that I went down to Chicago with them for their first, their first audition. So within the first six years, so I taught the first five years myself. I taught every level of ballet from preschool dance all the way up. Um, in 2008 is when I learned about and met Miss Carrie Benedict, uh, brought her on board, and she has since developed the curriculum that <laughs> raises essentially all of our young students. Uh, so she has been with us for 15 years. A lot happened within that time frame. 
So we had our first Fall for Dance in 2009, a year after that. Fall for Dance is a student-directed, choreographed, everything show, um, typically. Every year tends to be a little bit different these days, but uh, it was initiated as a student uh, choreographed performance. And this is important because uh, students don't typically get the opportunity to learn how to choreograph, learn stagecraft, learn light design, learn how to direct, learn how to run a space with their peers um, until university level. So it's it's kind of kind of a unique fun thing that the that our students get to learn this so early. Uh, shortly after that, in 2011 and 12, we started collaborating with Great Lakes uh, Chamber Orchestra and did a couple of performances, world premieres at John Hall. Uh, a year, this again, same time, very exciting time. We had our first Sugar Plum Fairy Tea. Uh, that tends to be at different locations and, and it's a, a lovely fundraiser that is on a, a weekend before Nutcracker and our principal dancers all show up, makeup, costume, and all of the little guests dance together, eat their tea and little cucumber sandwiches uh, and get to know the dancers and then get to come and see the performance. So it's a really intimate and special uh, afternoon. Um, and then we did our first full length Nutcracker in 2013. Up until then, <laughs> we had been doing excerpts on the stage the night of o Petoskey Open House. Oh my, <laughs> oh my. If, if you were at the Youth Awards ceremony, um, then you can see what even 10 bodies on that stage looks like and they weren't dancing um, last Wednesday. So uh, to do Waltz the Flowers, Waltz the Snow, you know, all of these things, the night of open house was a little, it was a little hectic. And in fact, we would do it in waves. So we would do, you know, 5 p.m. We would do one whole show and then an hour later, do it again. Ooh. Anyway, after a couple of years of that, it was, it was a great thing to do because we had to build up the costumes and build up the repertoire. And so from there in 2013, we were ready to do our first full length Nutcracker. And so now we're gonna watch from 2017, so this would have been Taylor Naturkis's last uh, Nutcracker with us. Uh, Taylor Naturkis is now a soloist with Miami City Ballet. Uh, she got her contract for her quarter ballet at Miami City Ballet uh, her senior year of high school. So this is from 2017. And we all know Tracy Thompson. So in 2010, I had the great honor of receiving the uh, Dance Teacher Award presented by Dance Magazine. Actually, Ben Cheney was there. <laughs> Hi, Ben Cheney. Uh, so um, I was nominated for, uh, well, Dance Teacher Private Studio Award. Uh, and it was really extra special for me to receive that. Um, at that time, because I had a few dancers dancing in New York at the time. Um, mm -hmm. This was Miss Carrie and I had just gotten to, so we had just started working together for only two years. So she was my plus one. So we really got to know each other, which was extra special. And then Claire Millard, big sister of Lewis and Marie, 
Ben Cheney, Hannah Biaki. There were a bunch of, of students or alums at that point who were down in New York. So we, I got to celebrate with them. They came to the affair. The, the, my, my father came and we all had dinner. It was really, really special. Um, let's see. Uh, yep, again, around that same time, 2010, our dancers started getting scholarships to the, the premier programs in the country. Uh, we started hosting auditions, Deep Blue Rooted Dance Theater, Ballet Chicago, Blue Lake Fine Arts Camp. Uh, we still do uh, host auditions at, at Cricket Tree. Um, and then Hannah Bianchi was our first contract right out of high school, uh, to which she then uh, went on to dance with Deep Blue Rooted Dance Theater. For two years, then she went to SUNY Purchase. So she she did it in a, her own her own order. There's no right way to do things, so or wrong way. Anyway, so continue, please. So this is Hannah as Captain Hook, um, in one of our one of our first full length ballets. <clears throat> Hannah was a terrifying Captain Hook. I think she had the hook on the entire week of that show. I don't think it actually ever came off. <laughs> uh, so uh, once again, meeting and bringing Miss Carrie Benedict on the team really helped shape where we are today in, in a multitude of fashions. Uh, so we started doing the full-length ballets in 2010. Up until then, we had been doing mm, kind of, you know, piece, 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 piece with congruity. But but Miss Carrie and I talked and talked and we we're like, Let, let's go for it. Let's do full-length ball story ballets. Uh, Miss Carrie is is influential in that, in that she is a great storyteller. Uh, so, you know, we we merged our our strengths together to, to start doing the ballets. Uh, so we, in 2010, you know, we started that program and, and never looked back. This year, plugging this year's full like ballet, in June 9 and 10, we're doing Mothra, the ballet, 1961 Japanese sci-fi fantasy. So uh, it's going to be a fun one. Yes. yes, they're all fun. But and the artwork just got posted in the in the um, uh, entryway by Peyton Beckerine, who is our Mothra. So our Mothra made our artwork, which just was fortuitous and yeah, so it, it's, yeah, it's quite lovely. Mm -hmm. So got to talk about the pandemic because it happened and we, we really, I, I uh, there was so much growth in every, in every way, shape and form um, for SOB during that, that time, our student engagement, you know, we, <laughs> six days a week, we were, probably Zooming for minimum of five hours a day. The amount of, of, of curriculum that we could give the kids because, you know, school started waning off. And um, so we, they had dance history and music classes and research projects and screened. I mean, you know, we just, we, we just kept feeding them more and more and more and more things to do and how to look at and to uh, educate their brains about what they love in addition to, to their bodies. So we had also master teachers uh, from all around the world, again, benefit of Zoom. <laughs> uh, so 
I reached out, you know, within a week of, of everything shutting down, I reached out to Haley, who was living elsewhere at the time. And I said, hey, will you help me get all this online? And, and you know, of course they did. And I reached out to all of our alum who are still active in the dance world. Nobody said no, everybody jumped on board. Um, it was a full team effort for sure. And so, you know, some of our alum then were reaching out to some of their mentors from, from their past. And so we just got to give a really, really rich experience, I think, uh, to our students. Uh, we really, really honed in on screen dance. So screen dance is, uh, mm, I, I would put it as showing dance as, something that you couldn't do on stage through the medium of, of video. So people dancing underneath water mm -hmm. or people doing things upside down or things that you would not ordinarily be able to see in uh, on a stage or site specific work or things like this. Uh, so we were developing that with our students. Um, and of course, social media, we, we just really jumped into that, so. This is a, a, a video of what a one-on-one -on -one Zoom class would look like. This is Olivia Pearsall. She's at Miami City Ballet. And the little one, Sierra Schley Huber, is uh, one of our up and coming stars. So uh, she, she, although wee bitty and tiny in that video, she's, she's blossoming quickly. So you'll be seeing her quite a bit of her in the, in the next couple coming years. Um, and then on a, on a, in a different vein, uh, we did a 2020 Nutcracker that was a screen dance uh, that was live or uh, streamed so that anyone in the entire universe could see it. Uh, and we took Petoskey as our as our hub. Uh, so we were filming on the pier and we were filming in various locations throughout town. Um, and then again, using the, the various editing techniques and styles that are conducive to screen dance and, and changing dance and how we see it. Uh, this was an excerpt from our grandpa from that Nutcracker. Mm -hmm. Dewan Jordan was instrumental in, in that. We spent many, 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 many hours together on Zoom. So that little chunk that you saw probably took to one and I about just that, about 10 hours to edit. Um, we, we Just a, a fun aside, we actually filmed each student one at a time in with a green screen. Anytime there was a group, it was always outside and they were far apart. So filming one kid green screen at a time and then Dewan and and team and and all edited it so it looks like they were all dancing together so that female and that male dancer were never together um <laughs> we edited it together so thank you Dewan. <laughs> so this beautiful view is actually at uh the croft residency which is ben benjamin cheney's uh dance arts residency in horton bay uh and we enjoy some really nice cross pollinate pollination uh, we grew our staff rather recently, I would say within the last several years, a few years, five years or so. Our, uh, some of our alum have 
gone into the world, pursued dance professionally, and then have come back and joined our team. Our, uh, we've reached new creative levels in choreography, lighting, sound design, dance styles because of that. In 21, we moved up the street to our uh, second location, um, which is quite lovely. If, if you ever want to stop by and, and take a visit, let me know. Um, we have just continued and continued to collaborate with more, more musicians, professional companies, choreographers. Uh, we recently did Mask of the Red Death, right? Uh, it would have been 20, 20, 2019, yeah. We did Mask of the Red Death, Lone Wolf collaboration last year. Uh, Peter Sparling has done a couple of years of residencies. We look forward to having him back this year. And he's got a really super special surprise that he's gonna be setting on our dancers uh, the week before Labor Day. Uh, I can't give it away, but it'll be a fun time. Julia Feldman from Sacramento Ballet did a residency last year, set a gorgeous 15 minute piece of work that was premiered uh, at our Fall for Dance this past year. She's coming back again this summer. So we love collaborating with visual artists, musicians, dance artists, all, all manner of, of collaboration. Roger Tallman and, and I have been, have been talking about some fun, fun ideas upcoming. So lots of collaboration. Present. So we have, as I mentioned, Fall for Dance, we have produced 16 uh, student produced shows. Uh, so they costume, like I said, they costume it, they edit their music, they direct it, they design their own lights. Uh, 320 student works performed. So every piece, that's, that's how I'm identifying that number. Uh, that's a really lofty amount of student work. Um, and we couldn't be more proud. Screen, screen dance, uh, I'm incorporating into that student work. Uh, let's see. We've had four students accepted to the, the Scion residency at the Croft. Um, that's a really, really cool uh, youth residency. They, are, they go to the Croft. Uh, there's a schedule that, that they come up with with Ben Cheney. And then they get to work with mentors that are professional dance artists that come to the, the craft to work with on their own work, but in addition to their, their uh, the Scion residency kids. Uh, let's see. We've had 10 student works accepted at juried Radfest shows and as well in other, other juried uh, screen dance festivals. Uh, Radfest is a an alternative dance festival that's juried in Kalamazoo every year. And um, yeah, we've had student 10 kids pieces accepted. This year we had three. So it's exciting. How competitive is that? Pardon? How, how many students are up for consideration? That's a great question. Thank you. So how many students are up for consideration? This is actually a professional juried uh, uh, dance festival. So it's primarily adults. They 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 specify one day for youth. So there are typically about seven to ten youth pieces that are presented. I don't know how many are submitted, but um, it's it's a it's an honor to be accepted. This is a, a an example of a work that Haley actually choreographed uh, for Radfest a few years ago.
So screen dance, even though I, I'm not describing it well, English is not my, my native um, mode of communication. So, so bear with me. Uh, so we've had 15 student produce video and screen dance pieces that have been shown in performance venues. Uh, four of them accepted at both RadFest as well as Rethink Dance Film Festival um, and collaborations with pioneer of screen dance, Peter Sparling. So Peter Sparling's emeritus professor from U of M. Uh, he is a graduate of Interlochen and Juilliard. He had his own company for several years. He's the only dancer in history to have danced with both Jose Limon and Martha Graham. Um, he's a genius uh, and friend of ours, and he has really, really helped shape and 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 guide us in, in a multitude of ways that I couldn't be more grateful for. So, the screen dance times. This is uh, this was a, a screen dance that Leaf made uh, the year after the pandemic. He lost his grandmother, and he was eleven, and so this was his way uh, to. Mm, communicate that to to honor her um, and so he was 11 when he made this this was his first attempt at a screen dance his second one this past year was was selected as well to be to be shown at, at Radva so And in, in fact, uh, Leap screen dance this year was was because of his residency at the Croft. So that's pretty pretty awesome that that it, all the worlds joined forces there. So this is Little Taylor at Miami City Ballet. So here are some of our professional uh, accomplishments and and, and uh, BFA accomplishments thus far that our students have achieved. Our faculty. Look at this. So, Miss Marie, who is here, Marie Millard is Lewis's big sister, and so uh, we we had the, the the thought to put a a little picture of what they were when they were our student next to their adult headshot. So, Miss Marie teaches uh, ballet. She's she she's a bit a bit of our ballet mistress, as it were. So she warms this the uh, company up before classes. Uh, she co choreographs with me. She choreographs her own. She teaches every week. Um, and Miss Marie has uh, danced all over the place. She went to the School of American Ballet, Pacific Northwest Ballet, Oregon Ballet Theater. She has uh, years and years and years of tremendous experience. And we're really honored to have her. Uh, Hannah Bianchi as Captain Hook there. She, like I mentioned, went to Deeply Rooted Dance Theater and then went to SUNY Purchase. Again, honored to have her. Miss Carrie Benedict, who, as I mentioned, came on board in 2008 um, and is, is the reason and the catalyst for all of our littles growing big and becoming what they are. Ellie Esford as Cheshire Cat there. Um, Ellie is our... Really, her focus is, is improvisation. She went to Pittsburgh Ballet Theater early, and then she went to Lyme's training program. Um, and so her focus is um, she can teach ballet, she can teach contemporary, she can teach modern, but she really, really emphasizes on, on improvisation, which is a, a special tool that they get to get to 
learn from her. Haley Van Patten, who is also my assistant, is uh, the frog there. <laughs> and so Haley was, uh, or her, Haley's focus is um, screen dance as well as modern dance. Haley teaches all three levels of fusion now. So this is the first year that, that Miss Carey has, has passed the baton to Haley now. So our faculty, this is, this is where the magic happens right here. This is a, an excerpt from last year uh, from Snow White. Miss Marie and I, I had the great privilege and honor. This was so much fun to uh, choreograph Jewels and Diamonds with Miss Marie. And so we had, how many kids were in this piece? 30 something? Yeah, about, about 30, 35. So this is an excerpt from our Diamonds and Jewels from last year. And we combined two levels in that in that piece, so there were a few levels. All right, the future. So that is a picture of Peyton. Dave Carroll took that one. She's the one that did the artwork for Mothra. Uh, she's let's see. This is a, a we do our our dancers audition portfolio pictures on the stage every year with Dave Carroll. So this is from there. We're going to continue collaborating. Uh, Martha Graham's 100th anniversary is in 2026. So Peter Sparling and I are scheming to make Petoskey a, a bit of a Martha Graham hub for that 100th year. So we're, we're trying to figure out how to make that, how to make that happen. So um, we're also planning on establishing a professional dance company. So stay tuned. More, 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 to, more to talk about there in the, in the future. Um, so we have some really, really exciting things coming up that are not bulleted here on this, this uh, slide that uh, stay posted. It is with great pleasure. <laughs> and who we've all been waiting for, pardon? Louis Millard, so this picture, did you take that picture, Miss Marie, or did Miss Claire take that picture? <laughs> so the and, <laughs> yes, yes. So the Millards have been with the School of Ballet from its from its uh, inception. So when I say that I founded the the program in two thousand three, I should say we founded the program in two thousand three. So uh, we have had the honor to work with Claire Marie. Charlie is a musician. He accompanies class. He's performed trumpet of the swan. He has performed. He has composed for us, with us. And then the little tiniest of all the Millards, Lewis. This is what a few years with School of Ballet will turn you into. Take it away, buddy. <laughs> oh, thank you, Miss Heather. Thank you, uh, Miss. Thank you for being here. Uh, 
Um, as Ms. Miller said, I started a uh, school of ballet in 2012. Uh, my first show was actually my sister Marie's last show as Dorothy, and I was a goat. I was surprisingly <laughs> like that photo there. Uh, I actually remember taking that in our attic. Um, and being really bored because I was like, why are you doing this? I will, I don't know why, I don't know why I need this, but uh, now I get them professionally done every year. Uh, uh, I started with Miss Carrie and instantly fell in love with dance and the art of moving, even though I couldn't do it very well at the time. Uh, but uh, I had some really amazing shows with Miss Carrie and uh, I remember meeting Miss Heather for the first time when she came down to watch class one day. I was like, who is this crazy lady that might, I might join her level next year or something. I was like, oh, wait, wait that's me too. I joined with Miss Heather in 2016, 2016. I've been working with her ever since. And then the intermediate level, and then I moved to the intermediate advanced level and the upper level uh, when I was 12. I've gone to Radfest multiple times, and I will say it's probably one of the coolest experiences to go to this alternative dance festival where I've gotten to perform. Miss Heather has given us the opportunity at Radfest, especially to perform with adults and take match classes from the adults. We are the only program that does that. There is a youth day, but we take all three days of Radfest. Uh, my first day at Radfest, uh, there was a master class that we took, which was um, how uh, I think it was racial injustice affects you, which was a very crazy thing for a 12 year old to be like able to be there and talk about that and be a part of something, even though I didn't really have a voice to talk about that. I don't really speak on it, but everyone at Redfest was so welcoming to know we need to bring in the younger students to talk about things like this and have programs like this. Redfest, amazing. I got to perform. <sighs> During the pandemic, Miss Heather asked me to uh, assist her with the intermediate level, which is level right before where I am at the uh, upper level. And uh, little Sierra Slay, uh, Slay Huber, who is doing her little plies, is actually now my student, which is really, really warms my heart to see like the progression in the school of ballet and to see my progression in school of ballet, which, so oof, I cannot stop looking at that photo. <laughs> 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 He didn't know that this. No, I, I was not told. I was not told about that. <laughs> but Leif Van Horn was actually one of my first students. And now he gets to, uh, I take class with him every day, which is a wonderful experience and really encapsulates to me how much I have spent with this program and with Miss Heather, of course. And I just don't want it to end. I would love to, I would love to dance here forever. It's honestly, this program is the most well-rounded program I have ever heard of, to be honest. I, as I've gone away to summer intensives and things and talked to other students about their programs, I find that ours is just, there's just more. A lot of schools are mainly ballet focused and we are predominantly ballet focused, but with Haley's screen dance and modern from, uh, from Hannah, from Miss Hannah, uh, and improvisation and contemporary from Ellie. It has really made our program one of a kind. We've, I have gotten opportunities that I know other students would never get until the collegiate level, which is mind boggling to me because I can't imagine being in my twenties and now just learning how to move my body in a different way and being expected to do that at a company level, which is, whew, it is a very uh, tough thing to just learn that on the spot. So I'm very grateful that we have had so much diversity in movement. Ben has always provided a, another avenue of movement that is different and unique to his own way. I have had the pleasure of learning. 
as I am, uh, things that are happening now, which I want to talk about, uh, I have started assisting with Claire Winnell in the special needs arts movement. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a program that she started because it is her Eagle Scout program, but she wanted to bring it. She brought the, uh, program to Kirkitree. She wants to teach people with special needs and disabilities that they can also do uh, movement and dance and art here at Kirkitree, which is really cool. I'm very honored to be a part of that. It's really something that is special, I think. And the arts are for everyone. Everyone can move and dance and make wonderful visual art. And uh, we have a performance. Where this one? Well, it is May 22nd at Prairie Lake Center for the Arts. It's a free public event, about like 35 minutes. And uh, this program that I'm part of will continue next year, which I'm very happy it's been picked up by Kirkitree. And uh, I'm really proud of that. SOB uh, gave me a place to show my emotions in a different way and present myself as a uh, as a person as a developing person uh, it got it gave me the chance to be able to carry myself in a different way be confident uh, unlike now <laughs> but uh it gave me a place to show dedication and drive. And it's given everyone that has ever entered our school uh, a place to be professional, learn your professional voice and to speak up for yourself and be strong and willed in your, uh, in being a person. It's taught me dedication and drive to continue to do things. Uh, it's also very physically active, of course. So. I am in the best shape of my life. Uh, thank you, Miss Heather. Uh, I went away to, uh, at a summer intensive, I went, we do those every summer. We go away and you audition or accept and you go to these um, companies where you'll take their summer course. and um, Hopefully be asked to stay year round at those places. That's one of the ways you can become a company dancer as you go to their school. Uh, I went to San Francisco Ballet for three weeks uh, and learned a different style than we teach here. Uh, it's more of a classical style, so original ballet style. And then I went to PNB, where Marie danced uh, for five or six weeks. And that was a neoclassical style, which is the newer, newer style from the 60s. Um, but that has opened me up to pursuing a professional career. And I would not be able to do those things without Miss Heather and Miss Marie and Ellie and Haley and uh, Hannah and, and Miss Carrie, definitely. Got me. Even my start. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is the entire school of ballet has shaped pretty much my whole family life <laughs> at this point, which is really fun. I remember talking to Marie and was like, they started doing ballet and Marie and my older sister, Claire, were doing ballet and Charlie was a musician playing for class. And it was when I was born, um, it was more of like, oh, when will he start? Not if, <laughs> if he will start is when will he start? I'm so glad I did start. And I am so glad I've gotten to share so many amazing moments here and on stage and in rehearsals. Uh, like grandpa um, video, uh, I got to understudy for that this year. And I got to work with Tracy and uh, our sugar plum who's Peyton uh, and learn just how to be more intricate in a rehearsal space. Miss Heather's always done an amazing job of in rehearsals, especially being very inclusive to dancers feedback with the choreographer. Some choreographers are like, no, this is how I want my piece. Piece my piece, I have to do it my way. But Miss Heather has always given us the flexibility to talk about what we need to get out from the choreography and what we need 
to put into it to get out of it. Uh, I can't wait for things to come. I'm so excited about your sparring and the potential of the 100th anniversary of Martha Graham. That is something I will be looking forward to immensely. I, uh, I love Peter Sparling. He's absolutely phenomenal. He's the most eccentric 80 year old I've ever met. Uh, <laughs> 70? <laughs> it's all the same at this point. Anyway, he was able to. Uh, help shape like the one little portion that I that we were missing from uh, SOB. That was uh, my strict gram movement, which is very uh, specific. Uh, he has set such amazing work here. And I'm so excited to what he will set in the future. His movement is his own. And it's unique to him and just him. So trying to find his movement and work through his movement is very challenging, but incredibly rewarding when you find it. I didn't get to work with Julia Fieldman. I was not there, but watching her work and hearing about it from the other dancers, they all talk about how happy it just made them to move the way she taught and the way she expressed herself through her movement and her balletic movement and it just kind of wrapped them all together into like a just a really strong group that was just in love with what they were doing i feel like that's what this sob especially our upper levels have become we've become more intertwined than ever before uh when i joined in uh, the upper level in Ooh, 2019. Ooh, I'm old. Uh, uh, it was this giant group of people that were incredibly gifted. We we're all really close, but going through the pandemic together, just spending five hours a day in the same Zoom, doing the same things all together, brought us closer than we could have ever imagined and made us uh, a small family together, really. So I'm, I'm very, very proud to see how it has evolved. I got to watch the first ever full-length ballet when I was two, and uh, I'm going to be here for the next one 11 years later. I get to be dancing it, which is crazy, and I'm so excited to have a show and perform, perform this amazing choreography that is completely different to what we've done before original work, which is, which is very important. And I feel like we have only done original work. We've never done a Swan Lake or a, well, not Cracker, but I mean. But it's still our culture. It's It's all us. But we've never done a, um, a classical ballet. We've only done our own work and our own choreography. So everything you see on that stage is original to us and to this school. What are you doing this summer? Well, yeah, I probably should say that. Uh, I am at, I'm going to Boston Ballet for five weeks, uh, which I'm very excited for. Uh, after Boston, I will get on a plane and fly down to Miami, where I will be doing two weeks of a choreographic intensive. So working with um, a choreographer to create about 40 minutes of work in two weeks, which is a lot. It takes about um, in past, it sometimes takes like two hours to create like a minute. So we're going to be pushing through to make an amazing work for uh, Miami City Ballet School, which I'm very excited to do and can't wait to show. On that note, bringing, going away and coming back and bringing back my style and my experiences from other places is always very important to me. I was a uh, um, Harriet Lee Hicklin Memorial Scholarship last year. And when I got, when I talked to Mr. Hicklin, he was, he said, it's about bringing back what you've learned, not about 
necessarily learning it, but bringing it back to this community and bringing more to SOB. And if there's anything I can offer this amazing program, um, I will. I'll try and bring it to this amazing school. That's all I have. Um, <laughs> So we'll open it up for any questions, if anybody has any, or clarification, or it's hard to, it's hard to talk about 20 years in a concise package, you know, especially yeah. when you struggle with the English. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Yes. So and... the program is 20 years old. Yes. All right. Perfect tree better around for kids. So in those 30 years before, your program, um, what were there ballet dance programs that you brought in? Yeah, so Ed's asking uh, it, prior to our 20 years, was there dance at Crooked Tree? There was. From what I gather, I, I'm, I'm a native of Dallas, so I, I was not familiar with Crooked Tree prior to, to coming here. Uh, from what I gathered, the basement was uh, basically kind of big dance studio. Um, so there had been a couple of various pro dance programs but um, there, there wasn't one in 2003, so no. Yeah. But I've, I've, heard, I've heard about different people that have taught and had classes, but that's, that's the extent that I know. And I've met a couple of the people, but. So you have anything from your leap of faith? I mean, that's why you're here. A what? <laughs> a leap of faith. Oh yeah, oh, it a complete leap of faith. Uh-huh. I think she pulled up from Dallas in a truck and said, I'm going to start school that way, right? That it, 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 it's close, it's <laughs> close. You know, I, I didn't know anybody when I moved up here. So, I, you know, I start bartending and waiting tables and then Crooked Tree was, had this, again, this beautifully renovated space and no program and well, got to change do. that. <laughs> so gratefully, yes, I was hired, but you know, not really having a feel for, is this something that the community wants? Is is this community open? You know, wh where's everybody at? And I thought, well, let's just do it and see. Let's just find out what happens. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> yes, Megan. I if I'm wrong because I remember in, it was at like 12, 13, somewhere around there that, because you were an independent contractor. Yes. Initially, you joined staff somewhere in that, I have a really hard time with dates. Me too. But I, but I, so it wasn't always that, that you were even a part of. No. In that fact, that I had my own business. business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and that really helped it grow. It did. Yeah. Becoming staff was, was a, a, a great move. It was around the time that we moved to. Right. It, it's in the. 2009 or no. It was after 12. It was after that. Okay. But yeah, I was an independent contractor up until then. So becoming staff has just really fortified, mm -hmm. supported, and elevated mm -hmm, where, where the program is today. So, Michelle. So this moves just a bit away from ballet and focus. So uh -huh. thinking about our Arts Center, Ed and I are newer to the community, been here seven years. And just to listen to you talk about how you took this leap into this and build this whole program. I think it speaks very highly for what all is going on at Perfect Tree mm -hmm. and what opportunity could be there because mm -hmm. you never know what an arts form someone in the community may say, boy, I would like to see this really happen in our community. Is there an interest in it? So those people could approach Perfect Tree with ideas and you just never know where that's going to take the community as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're always we're always looking to for new and interesting ways to because this community is just so incredible and and so supportive that sky's the limit. Aging community in the arts. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's so exciting to hear you uh, both talk about how uh, dance is building a whole person and oh my gosh Louis, you're so confident and it's here <laughs> it's just amazing 